Welcome back to the Circuit Sphere. In 1997, Apple introduced the Power Macintosh G3 all-in-one, a rather uncommon release as it was exclusively available for purchase in the education markets of the United States and Canada. Offered for just one year, this vintage Mac, affectionately known as the Molar Mac due to its tooth-shaped design, has piqued the interest of enthusiasts. In this video, we'll explore the possibilities of upgrading this unique piece of Apple history. I'm eager to enhance this all-in-one G3 with a series of upgrades. Firstly, I'm hoping to incorporate this 300 megahertz G3 processor sourced from a blue and white G3. Next up, I'll be integrating an ATI Rage Pro card with a DVD encoder, also salvaged from blue and white G3. To further enhance the system, I'll be installing a new Asus DVD CD rewritable drive. Lastly, I aim to boost the storage capabilities with the addition of a 120 gigabyte SSD drive. I also want to make sure that we update the RAM, give it a little bit more, and we'll be using these IDE to SATA drive um, adapters to make uh, the DVD and SSD work on this Power Mac. But before diving into the upgrades, let's establish a performance baseline by conducting benchmarks using the Mac Bench 5 and Rave Bench 1.1. This will provide us with a comparison point once the enhancements are complete. Before we dive into the excitement, I wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude. You are the reason for my passion to continue growing the circuit sphere. The support, comments, and enthusiasm you have shown have been truly heartwarming. Here's where I need your help. If you've been enjoying the content, if you've found something helpful, entertaining, or just something that brightened your day, I want to ask you to simply hit that subscribe button. Thank you. I run into this every once in a while where when I put in um, a, a burnt CD, it wants to format the CD. It only happens, I want to say like 30% of the time, and I don't know if it's um, a bad drive or if the drive's not clean. Uh, I'm gonna try cleaning the drive first. Let's see if that fixes it. Needless to say, we're already off to a great start, but I love these uh, Maxell CD cleaners. Put a link below, but they're cheap and they really do the job. They have these little wipers that go through and clean off the lenses and they do a really good job. This is a specially designed CD lens cleaner. Fiber brushes can effectively remove dust, dirt, and oil from your CD lens. Please select track 3 and press play when the music stops. The cleaning is now complete. Please enjoy the music. Plus, the benefit of this is I get to listen to one of my favorite classic songs. Alright, now that that's clean. There not appear to be too much dust. Let's see if that'll get us the benchmark. Working. No. So I've already got some baseline specs from another uh, G3 that I did. So we're going to use those because I can't get this to work with my burnt CDs. So we'll go ahead and just dive in to the upgrade portion. In order to get the all-in-one open, there's four screws. I've already taken them out. 
but they go on each corner here, which allow you to slide out the logic board tray. And then you gotta disconnect it from the housing here. So you got your power cord. Then you've got your monitor. And then, oh, there's two um, clips right here that you gotta pull in. And just like that, it's out. So it looks like this one has 128 megabytes of RAM already, just not too shabby. There's a little clip right here for the hard drive. Oh, and it's fragile. fireball that possesses four gigabytes of hard drive space bust out the 2.5 to 3.5 adapter Helps keep everything solid. Slide the hard drive right in there. Then you gotta take these adapters and make sure there's a master and slave. And uh, you gotta make sure this one's set to master. Slide this bad boy back in. There we go. Now we need to get over here to the CPU. Remove the ground. And then put a little pressure there. You pry. And then that little clip comes right off. Remove the latch. Pull the bad boy right out. Oh, this is a 350 megahertz. I uh, said 300 at the beginning. Okay. 300. Let's go ahead and lock this in. Use our little pry bar to get it fastened in and stick our ground screw back in I'm going to come over here and replace the red jumper with the blue jumper now for 
the uh, ATI Rage Pro. Right into there. It's seated very lovely. And we will add these two sticks of RAM. I believe it's a 64 and a 32. Now we will reapply this little bar that holds the CPU down. This cable goes on top. There we go. Flip this plastic clip up. And fasten it back down. Very good. Now for the DVD drive. Put that on its side. And here's your DVD access. Go ahead and unplug the cables. Ow, those are always a pain <clears throat> to take off. And then there. There we go. Oops. One size smaller Phillips. And then making sure that's on master again. Slide that in and give this one a connector. All right, quick recap ATI Radeon or ATI Rage Pro with 16 megabytes of RAM and then the DVD encoder. Um, we have upgraded the RAM, gave it a 350 megahertz G3 from a blue and white. Uh, we upgraded the hard drive to 128 by SSD and then upgraded the DVD drive to a brand new Asus DVD rewritable, CD rewritable. So now, We'll slide it back in and we'll see if we have any, we'll see if we have power. Now, almost, I'd say 99% of the time, um, something goes wrong. So when you're dealing with these old beige ones, it's just a given, this is all gonna get pulled back out. Slide it back in just a hair there. And you can go ahead and start reconnecting the cables. Then over here, get the power cord or power connector, power supply connection, if you will. Like this. Connected. All right. Let's see if we can get 9.2.2 installed. Oh, 
All right, we got our Mac bench scores. I'll get these recorded and then we'll go over them in. Next up will be Rav bench. Rave bench, excuse me. We have our Rave bench scores. Go over those as well at the end. Let's check out the basic stats. I found a similar computer on the list that had a hard disk drive and it got a score of 915 on the Mac Bench disk test. On our Molar Mac, which has a solid state drive, it scored 2,563 on the same test. This shows a 180% increase in the disk score. So upgrading to an SSD is definitely worth it. Overall, overall, this Mac got a total score of 44,040, placing it in the middle among all the Macs that I've tested. It got the highest score among the 1997 Beige G3 Macs, but it was outperformed by the 1998 newer generation of Power Macs. I'm going to start our gaming off with a good old classic Diablo. System requirements. System 7.5 or higher. Power Macintosh. Minimum 16 megabytes of RAM. Minimum 13 inch monitor. 256 color. Double speed CD. This machine blows those specs out of the water. So we should not have any problems. There is literally no crackling on those speakers.
send a fellow drinking peace? I know you got your own ideas, and I know you're not gonna believe this. That weapon you got there, he just ain't no good against those big brutes. Oh, I don't care what Griswold says. They can't make anything like they used to in the old days. Thank goodness you've returned. Much has changed since you lived here, my friend. All was peaceful until the Dark Riders came and destroyed our village. Many were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or, or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of our townsfolk may yet survive. Follow the path that lies between my tavern and the blacksmith's shop to find the church and save who you can. Perhaps I can tell you more if we speak again. Good luck. The sanctity of this place has been fouled.
Molar Mac, also known as the Power Mac G3 All-in-One, didn't stick around for too long. It was up for sale for only five months, from March 31st, 1998 to September 1st, 1998. It even made it to Macworld.com's Six of the Rarest Macs article, published on October 18th, 2012. Well-kept examples of the Molar Mac sell for over $1,000 on eBay. My first time trying out this unique Mac has been pretty cool. Even though it doesn't get as much attention as the original iMac from late 1998, I think the Molar Mac should get some props. The best thing about this all-in-one G3 is definitely its speakers. They sound way better than the ones on the original iMac released at the end of 1998. Thank you so much for joining me on this Molar Mac adventure. Remember to enjoy your hobbies and until next time, have fun and take time for your passions. So high, I'm hypnotized.